Questions 32 to 35 in the ASA green paper. Question 32. A group of three fatty acids that are all saturated is. So saturated fatty acids have a general formula of CN H2NO2. What this means is that the uh, if we added up all the carbons and all the hydrogens in a saturated fatty acid, we find that the number of hydrogens is double the number of carbons. So let's apply this to a couple of the answers. So in A, we have capric, stearic, and serotic acid. Capric acid has a chemical formula of C9H19COOH, which means that it has 10 carbons and 20 hydrogens. So as you can see, the number of hydrogens is clearly double the number of carbons, so therefore capric acid is a saturated fatty acid. Stearic acid has a has 18 carbons, 36 hydrogens, so therefore since the number of hydrogens is double the number of carbons, stearic acid is going to be a saturated fatty acid. Finally, serotic acid has 52 hydrogens and 26 carbons, so therefore it too is a saturated fatty acid. So for question 32, A is therefore the correct answer as capric, stearic and serotic acid are all saturated fatty acids. Question 33. The number of double bonds in arachidonic acid is. So here we've got an example of the alkyl chain in a saturated fatty acid. So with the exception of the terminal carbons, every single carbon is attached to two hydrogens each. But when we add a double bond to this um, chain of carbons, what we're going to do is we're going to lose two hydrogens. So every time we add a double bond, we essentially lose two hydrogens. So therefore, the number of hydrogens lost uh, is going to be the number of hydrogens we'd have if it was saturated minus the number of hydrogens actually in the fatty acid. Uh, and the, therefore, the number of double bonds is going to be the number of hydrogens lost, but divided by two. So, what we've got here is arachidonic acid, the chemical formula for arachidonic acid, and if we add up all of the individual atoms, we get 20 carbons, 32 hydrogens, and two oxygens. So, what we'd expect if um, arachidonic acid was saturated is that the number of hydrogens would be double the number of carbons, so therefore we'd expect it to have around 40 hydrogens. But that's not the case, we have 32 hydrogens in arachidonic acid, so therefore the number of uh, hydrogens essentially lost is equal to 40, the number if saturated, minus 32. So what we get is uh, eight, and therefore, the number of double bonds in arachidonic acid is going to be 8 divided by 2, which is equal to 4. So the number of double bonds in arachidonic acid is therefore 4. So D is the correct answer. Question 34. Cottonseed oil contains large amounts of polyunsaturated fatty acids. When this oil is used to make margarine, the fatty acids are changed chemically in order to increase their melting points. One change that would achieve this would be. So what we've got here is uh, a saturated fatty acid and a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Now, saturated fatty acids, they're quite linear because um, all these carbons, they all have four bonds um, and most importantly, they all arrange in about a line. But polyunsaturated fatty acids are a little bit different. The, each of these double bonds adds a little kink into the chain of carbons. So what this means is that polyunsaturated fatty acids are a, a much less linear shape. Now, this has um, significant consequences. Firstly, it means that polyunsaturated fatty acids pack much less closely together. So saturated fatty acids that make this uh, nice tight grouping 
whilst polyunsaturated fatty acids because of all this kink and this weird sort of um, bent shape what this means is that polyunsaturated fatty, fatty acids uh, don't pack together very closely they're a much looser arrangement so as a result because polyunsaturated fatty acids have a lot more trouble um, forming these tight close groupings they have a very low melting point because things like dispersion forces are much less strong in um, structures that cannot pack as closely together so whilst um, saturated fatty acids because they can pack close together they have high melting points polyunsaturated fatty acids have low melting points because they can't pack together as nicely so what this means is that if we reduce the number of double bonds in the hydrocarbon chain we would see an increase in um, melting point because the fatty acid would suddenly be able to pack much closely to much more closely together and therefore would have a higher melting point so for question 34 c is the correct answer as if we um, changed our cottonseed oil from a polyunsaturated fatty acid to a uh, less unsaturated fatty acid i.e a fatty acid with less double bonds then we would see an increase in the melting point as asked such stated in the question so for 34 c is the correct answer as double reducing the number of double bonds will increase the melting point of a fatty acid question 35 the iodine value is a measure of the number of double bonds in a fatty acid one molecule of iodine reacts with one double bond the iodine value is the mass in grams of iodine that reacts with 100 grams of the fatty acid. The iodine values of capric, gaitic, and arachidonic acid are in the order. So we know that one mole of iodine will react with one mole of double bond. So we need to know two things to answer this question. We need to know one, the number of moles of each uh, fatty acid molecule and two the number of double bonds in each molecule so uh, if we go through each of these so we've got arachidonic gaitic and capric uh, hopefully you'll notice off the bat that capric acid is a saturated fatty acid so um, that's from the answer in question 32 and also um, if you can just sort of quickly add up all of the hydrogens and add up all the carbons you'll see that capric acid has double the number of hydrogens than it does carbon so therefore it is a saturated fatty acid so since it's saturated it has no double bonds and therefore will have the lowest uh, iodine value possible that leaves us with arachidonic acid and gaitic acid so first off we've got to find out the number of moles of each of the fatty acids we have we have 100 grams of um, the fatty acid and we can find out the molecular weight of each of the uh, fatty acids so arachidonic acid has 20 carbons 32 hydrogens and 2 oxygens so if we figure out the molecular weight, what we get is 240 plus 32 plus 32, which gives us 100 on 302. Now you can either leave that in the fraction form or you can um, just find the approximate value of that. So that's it's pretty similar to 1 on 3, which is about 0, uh, 0.33. So we can also, we've got to do the same thing to gaitic acid. What we get eventually is 100 on uh, 254, which is pretty similar to uh, 10 on 25, which is close to 0.4. So now we know the um, the number of moles of each of the fatty acids 
we can times that by the number of double bonds to figure out the, uh, sorry, the number of double bonds in each molecule to find the total number of moles of double bonds that we have. So, uh, arachidonic acid has four double bonds, uh, as found from question 33, and gaitic acid has one double bond, um, which you can just sort of figure out on the side. So, therefore, the number of moles of double bonds from arachidonic acid is equal to 0.3 times 4, which is equal to 1.2, and the number of double bonds of gaitic acid is 1 times 0.4. So the number of moles of gaitic acid, which is 0.4, times 1, because each gaitic acid molecule has one double bond. So therefore, uh, arachidonic acid will have a... 100 grams of arachidonic acid will have a greater number of uh, double bonds than 100 grams of gaitic acid, and in turn, gaitic acid will have more double bonds um, than capric acid. So, therefore, the iodine values is going to be in this order, and therefore, D is the correct answer for question 35.